Good morning, everybody. So nice for you to be here today. 71 outside. I had to step outside for a little bit to um, remove some debris. And I was just amazed at how warm it is outside. Um, but I know that, you know, can turn tomorrow. Um, but I, I want to talk a little bit about decorating for fall and using mat natural materials to do this. I'm not talking about, you know, those those funky little Halloween decorations and spider webs and spiders and, and things like that. I'm talking about the real McCoy, um, natural items that you can find around your home or out on a nature walk um, and can incorporate into your existing home decor um, to create a very warm, welcoming um, environment for you as you're hiding out from COVID like most of us are. Um, in fact, uh, I think that this has been one of the most fun presentations I've, I've done recently because it did allow me to get out and see things in nature and, and have a ball. So today we're going to share a lot of ideas on um, how to gather natural materials, what to look for, what works best in decorating. Uh, we're going to talk about some tips and ideas. I'm going to show you some design inspirations and also show you how to develop um, nature vignettes in jars and baskets. And um, we'll review a little little bit of elements of design when we go into a PowerPoint program. So we're going to start with a demonstration first, um, showing you the how-tos, and then I'm going to turn it into inspiration and bring up a, um, a short little PowerPoint presentation to review with you. So let's start with foraging. Foraging is a, an activity that you can do at any time of the year, but during the fall, it's especially interesting because fall is a transition from um, things being lush and abundant and growing and, and whatnot. And in the fall, and everything starts to go to sleep and prepares itself for the winter months of rest and everything so that it can pick up again in the spring and, and move forward. So. Fall is aptly known. You have fallen leaves, you have fallen plants, you have fallen branches, you have all sorts of things. So um, the first part of decorating for fall is going for a walk. And um, what I've collected, and, and I'm going to just step aside so you can see them here. Um, you see a whole table full of um, natural materials all collected in one walk, or excuse me, two walks, one around Oak Oakwood Cemetery and another one just around our, our little tiny piece of property. So you'd be surprised what you can pick up. But now I'm going to actually show you what those um, displays are. And I've enlisted my husband, Don. He's going to be my schlepper um, and help me move things in and out of the way. And Don, if you'll hand me that tray. Whoops. Okay. Hopefully you all can see that little tray. This is just things, when you go for a walk, you want to grab a bag. We have many shopping bags in our trunks now that we have to provide them, right? Um, so I always have them around. But you want to bring a bag or if, a bucket if you're around home. And uh, a, a cutting element. I like to have a little leather man handy, the one in my car all the time, um, or your pruners or, or something that you can cut from. But I'm just gonna kind of simply go through some of the things that are worth collecting. You know, everything is drying now, and these poppy heads that you see here, I think are very whimsical. Um, they have an interesting shape, and you know, if you shake them, your grandkids might like that. You can even, you know, hear some of the seeds. I've collected a ton of seeds from our poppies, by the way. Um, and then we have castor bean stems, these plants from castor bean. Looks a little bit like coronavirus, doesn't it? With the little spikes on the burrs and everything. Um, but it does add, <laughs> it does add a little bit of whimsy to your collectibles. Um, stems and, um, with lichen, lots of fallen branches and whatnot. Oakwood Cemetery is great for the things like that. Um, but you see the little bits of lichen on there, and I find that to be very interesting and provides structure in your um, your vignettes and your flower arrangements and whatnot. Even a simple little 
branch from a tree dried and whatnot, especially if it's got some nice interest in texture, which this little honey locust has, um, can be, can be um, of interest. Leaves, I mean, these golden leaves are just beautiful and there's all sorts of, of oaks and maples and, and whatnot. And of course we've got our pine cones. Um, and then we've got catalpa beans. Um, I've got these in the, um, from last year's seed heads that I found out and about. And then these are actually on the tree now. And um, I did, did cut some of these to use and you'll see them coming up in some of the displays. Other things are um, little bits of bark, um, lichen, um, I did bring in a, a, a kale that I just put into a, a decorative pot. Um, little pine cones, little bits of moss. And then I want to thank Angle Key Farm for um, providing me with all of the pumpkins and gourds that I, that I included. Those I couldn't get on a walk, um, but um, I, I picked some up early in the season. They have the best best, best cider donuts. Um, and, uh, and I went back and approached them and they were very kind to let me borrow them. So thank you, Angle Keys. So that's just a little sampling of some of the forage items. But I also want to point out in the back that you can see some grasses, um, both Miscanthus grass and Panicum grass, that light airy one. I'll bring them up closer later on. Um, and, uh, some other clusters of leaves. Okay, so when you're out, you only want to be looking for fallen objects. You don't want to be cutting anything live or defacing anybody's property. Same rules as um, building fairy houses, if anybody has seen um, my talks on building fairy houses with natural materials. So you're only looking for items that are on the ground, um, which means that you're going to be looking at the ground a lot, but that's good. We, we need to watch our step when we're walking. Um, so when you are, just look at things and, and don't see them as they are. See them as what they can be. And, you know, I think just because I like something, if I can put them together and return to visualize it, um, that's important to me. So um, other things that you want to do in getting ready. So you've gone foraging. And the only other tools you're going to need are something to cut with because you want to cut down branches and stems and vines that you're working with. I like to use tweezers if I'm getting into a long vase or something like that. I use, I have these around because of my work with terrariums, um, but you can also use tongs out of your drawer if you um, want to do that or even a long dowel to reach into some of those things. And you want to have um, some clean vessels and um, um, you want to clean your items. So I'm just showing you a few vessels that I went and around scrounging around the home and found um, merely just for ideas for you. So you can see how you can pull out all of these things. Um, simple vase that usually sits there just pretty by itself and I just added this little grass plant and, and added more interest. Um, these little um, jars are great to add leaves if you just want leaves of color in there or some fillers like popcorn or um, um, acorn, something like that, or even candles if you want to add candles into it. Another vase, again, just simple on display, but it has a fall color and just one little strand of a poppy stem. Simple. And when we get into then PowerPoint, I'll show you how to put all of those together. So I want to start uh, talking about um, memory, nature, nature jars. So what is a nature jar or a nature vignette? A nature vignette is actually something that, that you create from your foraging. So maybe you want to remember things um, from, from your walk and you want it to be a specific walk. So um, let's just say that, and I did, we went up to lock five in, in Schuylerville and, and walked and we came back with some collectibles. So this little vignette of, of items actually showcases some of the things I collected along the way. So I'm gonna clean it out. 
this little cheese board I found in my cupboard. You know, we have all those interesting things. So oak, oak leaf, dried oak leaf, very simple. Just gonna set it in there. I have a pine cone. I'm just gonna structure that in. I think that'll look nice kind of placed with the leaves sort of hugging it. I found this really interesting piece of lichen um, and I, I like them. So we brought it in, so I'm gonna set that down. <laughs> Maybe, well, I gotta both do this way. They all put together like a puzzle. Okay. Finally, the squirrels, I, mean, I can tell you the squirrels are gonna eat well this winter. Um, last month when I walked in Oakwood, I was stepping all over acorns. Last weekend when I walked in, o in Oakwood, I couldn't find an acorn to be had in its entirety. I could find caps and I could find broken ones, but those squirrels have been busy over there. Anyway, these were little nutshells that I found up in um, Skylarville as well. So I'm just chucking them in. I'm gonna showcase with one of these colorful little golden leaves. <clears throat> and to cap it off, voila. And that will just sit on your tabletop, your sideboard. You could put it up on a shelf if you've got a mantle or, or a wall shelf. Um, end tables, kitchen islands. It's, it's such a tiny little piece that you could put it um, just about any place. So here's another vignette that I made too. This was my Oakwood Cemetery nature um, vessel. And what it has, again, is I just layer things in. And this is when I use my tong to put it together. Um, I have the uh, catalpa seed pod. I found some feathers. Um, I really thought this pine cone was cute because it's, I don't know, just didn't all open uniformly. But, you know, it's things like that that catch your eye when you're out. A uh, piece of bark with some interesting moss on it. So I just jumbled them all into this bowl until I liked it and I could see everything. I've got some seed heads, I've got a mushroom, some lichen, um, seeds, leaves, and whatnot. And um, just a two of these together placed in a table, say your cocktail table, and you can even add a little pumpkin there. Let me pull this back a little bit so you can see that. Hey, Denise? Yes. We have a question. Okay. Do we have to worry about bugs or getting rid of any kind of bugs that might come in? Only the pine cones. The pine cones might, you know, have some little critters that are in there. So you can actually um, put them in the oven for a very short period of time to sort of kill them out. But when I go foraging, <clears throat> I actually leave things out for a day or two so that they can crawl away and, and whatnot. So I did not find in all of my looking for things, any bugs, you know, I did pick up some things in my foraging that I noticed were decayed and, you know, had some bad things on it and I left them on the ground. I didn't take them with me. So I hope that answers your question. You've got to be aware, um, but uh, this is one of the activities I do in the garden that I do barehanded and I, and I I don't like bugs. I don't like worms to touch my hands. I don't like spiders because um, they frighten me. They're not frighten me. They startle me. It's, um, so anyway, I, I don't think you have to be too concerned. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So again, here's a little simple vignette. A vignette is just something grouped together that tells a story, tells a picture. So, um, and it adds interest. And you notice there's three items here. One of the things in design is dealing with odd numbers. Um, it's that little, being a little bit out of whack that makes things interesting. So instead of decorating with uh, two of something, um, try decorating with one or three or five, but do things in odd numbers because it's that interest, that changing of heights and scale and texture and whatnot that, um, that makes it interesting. And if you do just two of a kind, it tends to be a little sleepy and not so interesting. So things to think about, those elements of design that I said we'd be catching, catching upon along the way. All right, so next we're gonna move into pumpkins and what you can do with pumpkins. We have another question. 
So, um, another question, sure. Do you use any kind of spray preservatives or anything to keep your uh, materials fresher longer? No, I do not. I do clean everything like the pumpkins. I wipe them down and whatnot. Um, but I think of all of this as very temporary and I protect things. So like if I've got, um, say, squash and gourds that are laid out, I will put a protective saucer under it to keep it from hurting any uh, the furniture. But um, these are not intended for long-term displays. Again, fall is that passage. So we only get like 30 days or something to do this. And then we're moving into um, another type of decorating. So um, I hope that answers your question, but I like things dried and, um, and natural, so I don't use any of those preservatives. I will, however, mention, if I didn't already, um, using hairspray on seed pods, like grass stems and, or grass seed heads, and um, because they have a tendency to drop seeds and to preserve them and extend them a little bit longer, you can just hit them with some hairspray, and that will keep them clinging to the vines longer. Okay, so hairspray okay. is the trick. <laughs> so I'm not going to take this apart because this is so easy to do. This is a, a wooden tray, usually sits right here on this island where we're working today, but it's usually filled with fruit of some sort. Um, in Christmas time, I put Christmas ornaments in it, and um, sometimes I'll just plant paper whites in it. You know, it's very versatile to, to have these little pieces around. Um, but for now, I've taken the pumpkins and gourds that Angle Keys was kind enough to let me use and have just placed them into this elongated um, vessel. I've added a few leaves because why not? Because it just adds to all of the festivity. But very, very simple. Um, I like to keep the stems again because I go for that natural look. If you were going for a more contemporary simple look, you could do things in all white and you wouldn't have to have the mix of the fall colors. Um, in fact, I hear that white pumpkins are selling big these days. Um, another thing that you can do is you can take gloshes, gloshes um, like this one here. I merely um, turn this upside down. Let's see. I'm going to do this for you. Okay. Donna, if you'll grab that top piece for me. Okay. So what I did is this, is when I was filling it, I turned it upside down and loaded in my stems. And then um, I have a saucer for protection. And if you just set that down. And you need to think about, because you're working upside down, you know, the placement of your gourds and whatnot so that your stems and whatnot look aesthetically pretty. Again, you know, there's even just these two together make a wonderful statement. It's, a, it's another vignette, but you've got the height that varies um, and, and just adds more cohesiveness to it. I could make even more of a statement by adding in some vessels in, in the front or another pumpkin on the, on the ground. Um, and other things you can do with pumpkins and gourds, of course, you know how to make jack-o'-lanterns. and <laughs> We all make jack-o'-lanterns. Um, but you also can paint them and you can fill them. You can cut the tops out and um, pull out the the seeds and, and um, whatnot and insert a cup into the pumpkin um, as your vessel to hold water and then you can fill in your flowers and whatnot. Um, trying to keep this limited time, like, like we could always do another workshop if you really want to. Um, I didn't do all of these, but I will be showing them on the PowerPoint. All right, so next I want to talk about pine cones. Pine cones offer a lot of variety between what they what they look like because depending on the tree they can be as tiny as this or if it's a white pine it could be something like this and if it's a, a spruce it could look something like this so they all have a lot of interest so i had a um we had a windstorm last week 
Um, so Lynn brought down tons of pine cones. This was just off the driveway. And I only have two trees there, but that was enough to fill up this, this compote. Um, so think about some of your, your um, vessels that you have in your kitchen that could be repurposed um, to use. But I thought this is just very simple. And then I took the top of the pine cones and sort of made them uh, look like they were actually flowers and, and just stood them up. I've removed some since I built this, so sorry if it doesn't look totally full. Um, and here you can see a hurricane that just showcases some painted um, pine cones. And these actually are on display all year long in our home, but uh, it was done by a friend. Uh, she had gifted these to me and she dipped them in an acrylic paint while they were still closed. And then when they open, they create all of this interest. So um, again, I just found it very, very interesting. And um, being a color person, it speaks to me. So that's on display all the time. So pine cones you can use in wreaths, in floral arrangements. You can use them all by themselves. You could have taken that wooden tray that I just had and just done pine cones with that. I've done that lots of times. Um, and then I'm going to just show you this one item that's going to go on our front door soon. Um, one of the things I could not find in my walk, it's a learning lesson when you go out and, and forage. I did not know that bittersweet really doesn't ripen until fall, until November. Um, I thought I could just go out, I harvest bittersweet every fall, um, but I do usually do it around Thanksgiving time. And I wanted it for this talk and I couldn't find any berries. I found the vines, I just didn't find the berries. Um, but anyway, this is a grapevine that I just, I cut several grapevines and they're great to work with because um, they can be subtle when you first cut them and if they're, if they dried out, you can soak them in water, you can wrap them around balls to make, make balls and or balloons. Um, uh, you can intertwine them that way. But I just took a simple loop of my grapevine and cinched it here with a, um, a zip tie. And I wanted it to be very simple. So asymmetrically, a little bit of that Bradford pear uh, stem was glued onto the, with a glue gun, onto the vine. I added in some seeds from the pear tree and attached again with a glue gun, a couple of pine cones. More of this catalpa. <laughs> you can tell I'm having fun with that. Um, and a ribbon, and this will go right on the front door for the holidays until Christmas time. Then we'll do something a little more in the season for that. Oh, we have a question about the grapevine. Okay. Did you find the grapevine at the cemetery? I actually found this grapevine at Lot 5 in Schuylerville. Um, but you can find grapevine in um, cemetery alongside the road. Uh, it's, very, it's very easy to, to collect at this time of the year. Okay. Um, let's see. Moving on. Oh, candles and pillars. I want to talk about candles and pillars. Candles. Where's my candle? There's my candle. <laughs> okay. Um, this little container, again, um, is something that's usually around the house in, in one form or another. Sometimes I use it as a base, sometimes I use it as a candle holder, sometimes I fill it up with garland. I mean, I, I, I find a lot of different things I can do. But here I simply just opened up a bag of split peas or lagoons and um, poured it around my, my candle and then I dropped in a couple of, of of leaves. If this had been out on the, the porch or the deck, those leaves probably would have fallen in naturally anyway. So I did, I just dropped them right in. But your fillers can be acorns, if you can find them. Those you need to get in September before the squirrels and chipmunks take them all in. Um, and you can use uh, cranberries, dried cranberries. You can use um, lentils. You can use popcorn, um, colored popcorn, anything that's filtering and, and uh, soft, little stones, um, all are, are something that you can easily put into your candle to um, add some interest. And candles in your vignettes as we get going are, are really good to do too. Um, this again is just a candle that was hanging around, but 
And it's just a simple candle. Now, if I wanted to, I could perhaps take a little bit of greenery and just sort of let it, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can see that. I might have to move it in closer. We can see it. You can see it, okay. Yeah, it so looks good. a simple little display around it. You can always add a pumpkin in for, for interest if you want. Um, another thing that you can do is you can take your candle holders. Um, and this is nice if you want to do it on a mantle and you have two, a pair of candle holders. You could do pumpkins of equal size and just um, put the pumpkin where the candle should be. And um, that adds some interest. It, it's a fireplace mantle. You want to put them on either side for balance. Again, that's something I'm prepared to talk about in um, the PowerPoint part of it. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about vases and stems. Excuse me. Stems and vines. Six and vines. Um, Amber vases um, are wonderful for showcasing your holiday decor. And I actually <clears throat> had a six pack of switchback ale um, that I don't drink beer, but um, somebody had and I said, oh, those would make great flower pots. So um, I saved those vases. I was gonna use them today, but I couldn't get the labels off with everything else I had to do. So um, think about Amber, collecting amber glass if you can, and, and uh, as long as, as well as clear glass, because um, the juxtaposition of the naturalness of like the bark of the stem to the gleam and softness of the, the glass just makes an interesting um, pairing. So here I took one branch, was an interesting branch when I picked it off the ground. Um, didn't quite fit into the neck of this vase, so I did have to cut it down, um, which is good because it gave me this nice framework that, that you see here. And then I had just this little bunch of pine with the pine cones that I also had foraged. And I just thought that little, little touch of, of that in the center of this, this wooden frame um, just completed it. Didn't need anything more. Now I'm going to show you a more elaborate one. And this dried arrangement is so tall. <laughs> um, you, can, you can actually have this for a long time as long as you don't bump into it and whatnot. Um, but I have this lovely fluted vase. Um, normally when we talk about vases for tabletops, we talk about vases that um, create your, your centerpiece no more than 15 inches high, 12 to 15 inches, so that people can see over it. But you can also use taller vases. You, you've seen these um, at weddings and whatnot. So these, these long vases move your flower arrangement up to the top and people can see under it rather than above it. So what did I do in here? I'm not gonna take it apart because we only have so much time. But I had some bunches of oak leaves, small bunches of dried oak leaves that I first placed around the perimeter of the vase to sort of add that framework. Um, since we're closing down the garden, I had some Dusty Miller, that wonderful silver white dusted leaf. Um, and this is all dry, there's no water in this vase. Um, that is, I just added that to sort of make a little bit more of a statement around the, the um, the base of the, the display, more catalpa beans. I bet you're all gonna be out there looking for catalpa, aren't you? Um, and then I took some pannikin grass, this very light, delicate grass, and I stuck them in to give it this upper strength and then filled it in with the um, miscanthus grass, the one that is a little more fuzzier. Um, those are the ones I talked about using hairspray on to keep them from dropping their their fuzz and whatnot and their seeds. So, um, but this lovely plant, I actually designed for our cocktail table in our, our living room. We have a very tall ceilings um, in that room. So this makes quite a statement and kind of fills up that volume of, of space and doesn't interfere with anything in the room. It just sits there and looks very pretty. So, so that's very simple, very neutral. Um, then I get a colorful one.
I did a colorful one here using some coral and Sonia, this very fine um, vine here, this feathery look. And that, that's the thing that I want to point out here is you're looking at a lot of texture. You're looking at this airy, delicate, fine Ansonia with the structure, whoops, <laughs> with the structure and, and um, sturdiness of the stem that adds some vertical height to it. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, again, using more of the castor bean. I just set that in the center because I felt the colors all related and finished it off with this cluster of piers. Um, pear branches with the seed heads and, and whatnot. So again, this is another one. This can go into my dining room table, um, but if you like, you can, these are wonderful pieces for your kitchen islands, for your end tables, anywhere where you're, you're trying to fill, fill up space. All right, last thing I'm gonna show you is pulling it all together. Um, and that's before we, move into the PowerPoint part. I'm actually going back to the nature, um, nature vignettes. I am going to show you how to build these little, little trays of collectibles. Um, and the reason that I like to do that is I'm a simple person and I like, I like life to function easy for me. So by putting all of my, my decor into a tray, I actually can um, move it out of the way when need be, and um, everything will fall right in here and keep everything else neat and clean. So I started, this is basically a, um, a holder for one of my casserole dishes. Um, got it right out of my closet, just a little natural seagrass sort of a basket. So um, I'm going to start with that, and we're going to make a little vignette of fall items that you forage. So um, how am I going to do that? I'm looking for interesting things that sort of speak to me. So I will start with, uh, let's say I'm going to start with this jar, and I am going to add in my candles. adding in some vertical height there. I'm going to have a um, pumpkin on my candle just because it's fall. Um, I think that these, these purple um, plants that I'm, I'm starting here or, or rooting um, will be a nice offset to this vase. And I'm going to add a pumpkin, but I need some height to my pumpkin. So... Hey, Denise, we have a question about the candles. Yes. Would you use, would you light a candle if you were using it in these deck uh, arrangements? <laughs> that is an excellent question. And I meant to um, address that. But, so thank you for that. Actually, this is a one time where I think safety is important. Um, with all the dried materials around and whatnot, I do not recommend using candles, wax candles with an actual wick. I uh, use a battery operated one, so much safer and they make them so that they um, pulse like a natural candle and they have the warm color and whatnot. So uh, plus the added benefit is you can put it on a timer and it goes on and off um, and doesn't darken your ceiling. So um, I, if you were using actual candles, you want to keep that away from any sort of fire hide hazard like dried stems and leaves and whatnot. Okay, so when you've got a, 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 a vase like this and you're going to be setting in low items, you might need a riser. This happens to be an old ashtray that I picked up at an estate sale or something, uh, an antique shop, and I just turn it upside down and it gives me a lift. So other things you can use are turned upside down pots. Um, I also collect little stands. I'm, I'm a biggie on, on circular things. So I have little stands that um, are always around and handy for me. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to keep this simple. So I'm just a cluster of maple leaves and, and some nice colorful leaves. And I am going to finish it with some pine cones. Thank you, John. <laughs> So um, I'm just tucking these in, 
just to make, say, welcome fall. And I have space for another item. So I have a, a real candle here, but I won't light it. And again, I'm putting it on a little stack so it has some height there. And there you have it. So you can put this again on your island, on your dining room table, on your um, cocktail table. And when you need to remove it, you simply pick it up and, and it gets out of the way. Or if you wanna just clean your table around, it slides in and out of the way. That big table, that big tray that I showed you initially with all of my collections, that is definitely going to become a, um, a natural vignette for my dining room table. Um, I'll be doing that after I clean up um, from today's event. So let me see, is there anything else? I think we are now ready to move right into the PowerPoint. So give me a minute to get around. All right. That was great. And I'm going to exit full screen here and I'm going to share my screen. And this. Share. Okay. Okay. So finishing up, this is all the pretty pictures of what you can make. I wanted to demo how simple it was, and hopefully you learned that just from um, my, my showcasing that. Um, but now this is a real, the real nitty gritty of inspiration for you. So there's pumpkin art. Um, think about those pumpkins and look for those that have warts on them and interesting shadings and whatnot. Um, vary your sizes. I think this vignette speaks very nicely um for wait a minute i gotta play this don't i yeah, <laughs> okay there you go it. sorry yeah, about that That's so used good. to being in a working mode <laughs> anyway um you know you can see that they're displayed at different levels and whatnot we talked about um height and varying the height for interest i would bring it even further down and say there's a, um, an upper level, a mid level, and a lower level, you know, lower level being your anchor. Um, and these candles serve as a nice vertical touch to the um, bulkiness of the pumpkins. But just varying those heights and whatnot sets them all off as opposed to them just all laying out on a tabletop. Um, but you can paint them, you can group them, you can stack them into totems or topiaries. Um, you can fill them with pretty flowers. So there's much to be done with with pumpkins and gourds. And I, I just had to share this with you because this came up in um, my text message this weekend. Uh, these, paint, these pumpkins were actually painted by my granddaughters. The two of them got together and spent many hours um, painting pumpkins for themselves or for their apartments. And I think they did a great job, don't you? More painted pumpkins, simple. The, the pumpkin on the left, you could accomplish that if you're good freehand. Um, it's just simple white paint and you could draw that. Or if you're not as, not as um, um, talented with a paintbrush, you can also use a stencil to create a look like that. But just again, simple. And then on the right, you know, uh, that one you definitely can do with a, a brush. Just dab your little white paint there. Um, and notice how they've just set off that whole display with a few acorns scattered about and they tied it all together with that, you know, that three upper level, mid level and, and lower level um, to, to give you that interest. Here's some items stacked into a totem um, and I have some stackable gourds over there that I wanted to show you but Time is of the essence. I'm, some of you have to get back to work, I'm guessing. Um, but these are just painted pumpkins and then you can um, stack them on an urn. In this case, leaves were inserted around the edge to sort of fill it out. If you wanted to make it a little more stable, you can stack your pumpkins and then run a dowel through all of them and uh, into the urn and that will stabilize them. 
on the right here, you see a small tray filled with, you know, nature's materials, which I demonstrated just a little bit ago. Simple pumpkins, um, a little house plant, and a couple of candles that rise above the pumpkins. So in this case, if they're real candles, you could use them. In the lower right are some hurricane jars that have been filled with nature's materials, which we talked about. Um, a little bit of bittersweet, some leaves, and um, you know, whatever, whatever it is that fits your fancy, um, you can put into those glasses. Love the bittersweet vine here. Isn't that just so delicate? I, I'm anxious um, for another week. I think those, those um, bittersweets will be in, in view and I'll be able to collect them. But just that sturdy little um, upright vase filled with some rambling bittersweet and um, set into a very small tray uh, with some gourds. Looks just beautiful. Looks healthy too. I'm not sure why it looks healthy, but it looks healthy to me. On the right, um, another, just a simple bowl, a cereal bowl filled with acorns. How cute is that? And then more branches and, and um, some pumpkins in a clear vase just to add um, filler and interest. Sticks and vines, welcome to the season. This actually picture was the inspiration for the, um, the wreath, the door hanging that I demonstrated to you. Um, I made it a little bit more full with the, the pear branch, but um, again, how simple is this? So all of you go out and grab your grapevine and tie a bow around it and, and um, hang it on your door. Um, certainly looks better than those, those pre-mades that you find. Just showcasing stems, how simple they are, but how beautiful they are. Um, this looks very cold on the left with these bare stems. They sort of remind me of a wintry scene, um, but they also remind me of nature and they make me feel good to have it inside the house. Um, and uh, since soon we won't be spending too much time outside. Uh, collect branches that also have some leaves. I have a wonderful uh, Japanese maple um, that weathers in the fall to a beautiful coral color and um, I do sometimes cut from my own tree. I won't cut from trees say in Oakwood Cemetery or Lock 5 or wherever I might be walking but I will cut from my own tree because it's a little judicious pruning in between um, and they just took the base and they filled it with more bittersweet vine to um, bring the design into the whole structure. <clears throat> and then here on the lower uh, right is a very full complete basket of just bittersweet and um, some berries. If I were to guess, I'm thinking they're from a hawthorn tree, um, but again, you, you can find all sorts of berries out there. Um, I, and I'm using natural materials as opposed to artificial ones. Your crop stores has all of these artificial ones, but why use artificial when you can use natural? That's, that's my thing. Showcasing more stems, just these little vignettes of, of fall um, decor, just grouped together, your amber glasses, your different size jars and vases, collect them all. Um, up on the upper right, you notice even a little apple has some interest into this little place, but there you see the hydrangeas and, and just a nice little grouping. This is on a round table. If you had a, an elongated table, a rectangle table, you could actually move that right down through the center of your table and, and um, set the stage for your display. And here you see a bittersweet wreath, um, very simple, looks a little bit unruly, and that's how I like it. Mantles and tabletops, we've talked a lot and I've showed you a lot of ideas that you can take to your mantles and tabletops, but these are the things that make a house a home. Um, if you look at this particular mantle, and you'll see it as you've got, I've got a few more to show you, um, the one thing that I always mention in, in decorating a, a mantle is to do things in, um, with balance. Um, you want to take, in, in this case, take an, an imaginary line through the center of that printer's box with a W on it. And if you look at it, you'll see that both sides are equally balanced. On the left side, you've got the vase with the, um, the corn husk on it and the, the little uh, dish with the pumpkin. And on the right side, you have a hand, candle holder. And unfortunately, David, your head is there, but I know there's something behind there that balances it off the grass. Um, 
but it just basically you you cut down and it's balanced on one side to the other right down to the bottom where they have the chair on the left um and the um <clears throat> the basket of leaves with the pumpkin on the right it just balances it because you zero in to the center part thought i had more well well we'll keep going maybe they'll show up <laughs> uh here is a tablescape and um, I talked earlier about bringing the arrangements up over the head so that people can see in between. Um, and I also talked about lining down on a rectangular table your, your um, natural materials for sort of like a, a bountiful Thanksgiving meal, if you would, um, that, that look of a harvest, a fresh harvest. Um, feel free to add in colorful scarves and table coverings and napkins and whatnot, because that only is going to add to the overall result. But there's nothing singular there. There are a grouping of things that create that effect. More groupings of bottles up on the upper right. I see I used a picture twice in my display. I think I really like that one. Simple. Simple is as simple does. Um, but just those interesting seed heads, they just, they just come alive when, when you see them displayed like that all grouped together. Another mantle. Here again, you can get that symmetry by dividing it. Now, I talk, uh, I've talked earlier about things being off balance in decorating, and, and that's an important guideline to follow. Fireplaces are the one place that, that breaks that rule because you just, it is a focal point, and you want to gear the eyes to move right into the front and center of that. <clears throat> this particular mantle is maybe a little too over the top for me. I like things a little more simplistic but I'm sure there's some of you watching that like things over the top. Um, and uh, so hopefully this will inspire you to, to be creative in your own homes. On the right, a more of a contemporary look, just using um, cotton seed heads and, and white pottery and, and um, some signage and whatnot, keeps all of the, all of the neutral tones there, um, keep it clean, keep it simple, and um, just looks really inviting. Down at the bottom right, um, we, they have just added an empty um, picture frame. They just mounted it, set it up on top of the mantle, and then they display a wreath in the, inside it. Um, and lanterns on either side, those lanterns can be filled with um, pine cones and leaves or candles or, or whatever. But again, just some fall decorating ideas that um, might inspire you to to do. I love this mantle on the left, this simple little bread, um, bread bowl, bread trug, um, and the um, tobacco vine just laid across the mantle, and then the pumpkin set into the trug. Simple, and then look how cute they did on the bottom, the clear glasses, just three little vases in three different heights, and three pumpkins, pulls it all together. See that balance, the vases on the left and the uh, candles on the right, more groupings up here. Um, I, this one kind of reminds me of my switchback ale bottles, but um, I didn't think that it would look uh, too attractive with all having a label of beer. So these look more medicinal, <laughs> um, but it is the same concept. Uh, if you have some um, tiered serving pieces, you can um, reclaim them with your fall materials by, again, just setting, setting up a nice display of vignettes of all those um, materials, your, your Indian corn, your potpourri, a little bit of a welcoming sign, whatever it is that um, you conjure up. So you want to become a set designer in your own home, and it does begin with your entryway. Um, isn't this beautiful? I look at that and I was like, I can feel the crunch under my feet. I can smell the leaves of the freshness and, 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 the, and the wonderful air, and it just all looks so inviting, and I just want to see some wind come by and wrestle up the leaves. And um, next, I want to be given a rake so I can rake them up and jump, and I'm like I was when I was a kid. And a grandmother. I jumped when I was a grandmother, too. I, I still am a grandmother, but they're bigger and they won't jump with me. Darn. <laughs> anyway, um, but notice how I talk about um, the symmetry in, in a fireplace. When you're dealing with your entryway, you want to keep that same concept unless you're 
got like a side hall colonial or something, maybe then you'll want to do it asymmetrical. But this talks, this actually showcases a lot of elements of design. Um, first off, the uh, urns. You see four urns there, and they're all filled with mums, and they're set across from each other to indicate that this is a passage. You are to enter here. And if you just sort of look at it, all eyes lead to the front door. So the urns are set aside, and then you get to the steps, and you start mounting um, various sized pumpkins and everything, and then they use straw bales to elevate some other things, attach the corn husk to, or the corn stalks to the, um, the columns, and voila, I, I just noticed, I didn't notice this before, but they've got little pumpkins on the pediments above the window too. So um, think about your door and the way you position things, you want to always keep your eye on moving them towards your front door. And then, of course, don't forget to hang something on your front door, like that cute little um, door hanging that I just made. Some things that can um, stay outside. Here you see an urn, um, simple little burlap tied around to dress it up a little bit more. Uh, corn stalk, um, other, other fall items just nest in there, sort of like those nature um, jars that we talked about earlier, but done free form in a larger urn. Um, again, you see on the right side, uh, the focus is all leading up to the door. It just gets more interesting as you move up the stairs. And um, that balance of having something on either side is, is what is leading you there. <clears throat> I uh, concluded this lantern here. Uh, lanterns are great for candles, of course, we all know that, but fill them with, uh, with those collectibles that you found on your foraging trips. I love this entrance, so simple. But a family of five, I'm guessing, lives here because they've got the mama bear, the papa bear, and, and uh, the three little kids. Um, but just how balanced and neat this is, you can't miss those pumpkins because you're walking up to it and you see the numbers and you look up above and there's the pumpkins. Again, balance, they brought it in to frame the whole door by um, adding more pumpkins and mums at the bottom. How cute is this bench? filled with all of the bounty of the harvest, multiple sized gourds and squashes and pumpkins and, and whatnot, all in just a, a disarray, but they all say welcome as you, you approach this doorway. Again, more corn stalks, um, they're, they're readily available out there and mums, we, we've got lots of things that we can do with them, um, but I like how they they didn't do a typical round wreath here. They actually took the, um, the corn husk and hung it on their door. I think that's sweet. So notice that autumn is more the season of the soul than nature. I think that's, that's what it's all about. It isn't just about nature. It is about how it makes you feel being a part of nature and showcasing nature. Um, and I'll leave you with this, autumn harvest, hand selected and hand picked. I wish you all great foraging trips and nature walks and, um, and now ready to, to answer any questions anybody may have. And I thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Denise. That was okay. super. All right, wow, look at that. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> All that good information. <laughs> yeah, very good. Any questions? I'm trying to get out of my stuff here. I've got to find my... I'm going to go back to the chat here. And we did have a couple questions. Okay, good. So let's see. Um, okay. <clears throat> I have a question on a different season. I like to make a balsam pillow for all the holidays. Where would I find balsam pine trees in the area so I can harvest the needles for the pillows? Well, they're going to be out <laughs> and prevalent very soon with Christmas trees. Balsams is a, a popular Christmas tree. Um, I, I don't know particularly where there's any balsam trees that you could cut from um, unless you have them in your yard. But again, you know, they, the trees are rolling in from Canada. 
um, into the area now. So you can get cuttings of branches from nurseries and whatnot because they're always removing branches and, um, and whatnot. So that would be my best get is go to the nursery and ask them if they have any um, remnants that they've cut aside and, and buy some bunches of that, unless you have balsams in your yard. But again, I'm not recommending you um, cut other people's property. Don't go down the street and cut them off your neighbor's tree, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think that's it's a good idea. Daylight hours. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea to go to the tree lot. Okay. Um, there's a comment about berries other than bittersweet, like winterberry. Yes, there's winterberry, there's cranberry, there's, I use the berries from the pear tree, which are a nice little, um, golden color kind of a golden green color um yes any berry you find even the dogwoods acusa dogwoods right now have these beautiful seed pods another thing that looks like coronavirus to me but they're red and very brilliant right now so that's um another type of berry that you can collect um and magnolia leaves Magnolia leaves are another great item um, and they're very sturdy. So those you can actually make wreaths out of them and you can make candle rings, you know, um, just glue them on to the top of some circular form, even if it's just cardboard um, and you can use them, but they make wonderful things. I had a natural magnolia wreath that I had used at um, holiday time and I, I spray painted it a, um, sort of a bluish green, like a robin's egg color um, for Easter and um, reinvented that before I had to discard it. So they can be fun, especially if you get the kind that have the brown on the backside. Yeah, I think of the Southern Magnolia, those are good leaves for that. Yes. They're very heavy. Uh, here's a good question. What do you fill the big urns with to get the flush look with the decorations on top? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's another one that I did want to talk about. So you guys are thinking for me. Um, I actually throw anything in that urn. Um, it could be an old milk bottle. It could be some cans. It can be some planter, um, some plastic uh, uh, flower pots. Um, you can you can just be newspaper even just to elevate it. Anything. It's all going to be covered. So. Um, sometimes if it's, if what I'm putting in my urn is a little bit too pliable, I might put like a plant tray underneath it to give me a flat surface to, to build everything on. So, you know, those saucers that we use to put under our, our big, um, flower pots, those I will put in an urn, um, on top of something that elevates it. It can be anything to elevate it. Okay. A lot of people saying thank you. Well done. Great ideas. Beautiful and so professionally done. Thank you, very inspiring. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> How can I tell a friend to watch the recording? Well, the recording will be on our YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and go type in Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rensselaer County, we'll have this recording up there in a couple of days. Okay. Uh, here's a semi-related almost question. When would you start forcing for Scythia or other branches? It is an, it's another talk. <laughs> I think I have a talk on forcing flowers indoors. Um, but I start in January. I start when it gets really desperate, you know, but your Forsythias um, and your magnolia trees and whatnot, they've already set bud. Um, and they just need the coldness, the cold sp uh, spree to set it up for blooming and, and later on. So I actually will go out in late January, early February, um, and cut down my Persithia stems. Now the thing about those woody stems, for those of you who maybe haven't done forced Persithia, um, or magnolias, or I, I, cherry stems. I, I mean, I've tried them all, um, but because they're woody and you've got to have the water take up into the stem in order to uh, make it bloom, 
you want to cut the bottom of the stem or smash it with a hammer of all of your stems of your forsythia. Um, so it's kind of a given. You go grab a cluster of forsythia, you take your hammer and you smash the bottoms or you take scissors and you cut each individual one. And in about nine to 10 days, sometimes even sooner, you will have blooms. I encourage you to do it. It's a great thing to do in the winter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we hope you do another program for Christmas. I actually already have a program called the Greening of the Seasons, um, which does bring in, it, it uses natural materials to decorate with, not fall materials, um, but more of, it, it showcases into Easter and um, spring, fall, uh, various seasons, but a lot of it is on Christmas. So thanks, maybe, maybe David will ask me to talk about that. Let's set a date. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thank you to Denise and Denise's assistant. So we have to mention Don. Thank you, Don. He was the hand. He's great. The right hand man today, right? Yes. I bring him on the, the walks too, so we can have more bags to carry. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have one person that wanted to talk, Chris Roblin. Is Chris there? Chris raised Hi. his hand. It's Connie, actually. Hello, Connie. Hi. I wanted to ask Denise, uh, what is the best kind of paint that will adhere to pumpkin skin? Like if you're painting the pumpkin. Acrylic paints. Okay. You can use acrylic paints. You can also use acrylic ink. Okay. And I, I saw a demonstration, although I, I'm not so sure about it. I, I do pouring with acrylic and I mix a medium in it um, that, uh, that slows the drying time. It can even be Elmer's glue that you put in with the acrylic paint. Um, oh. But it slows the drying time so you can manipulate the paint more on your, your pumpkin surface or whatever it is you're painting. Oh, all right, thank you. And you're welcome. Really enjoyed the talk. You're always wonderful to hear and see. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Denise. That was really great. I, I really enjoyed that. I thought I was doing pretty good. I put a mum on my back steps. <laughs> oh, now, what are you going to do now, David? Well, I'm <laughs> going to have to go home and start working on this. <laughs> no, there it was great. Go. Did you Did notice you that there weren't too many white pumpkins around this year? Uh, well... When I was up at Angle Keys, he said that they've been very, very popular. That the, the you can get the small ones, but the bigger ones, they've just gone. They went early. Yeah, that maybe um, is it because we usually. It's a big decorating them. statement, and they last forever. And you can do so much with white. Yeah, I've actually seen fake white pumpkins. Oh yes, I think I even have one. Oh, it's still in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's nice to see natural materials, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, thank you, everybody.